And we are here to mirror the blessings of the Most High. Yes, you are blessed beyond measure. And we're so thankful for all the things that he have done. Hallelujah. He have blessed us over and over again. That's why I give him some praise. Give him some glory. Give him some honor that he is due. Because he have done great things. And they are marvelous in our eyes. Hallelujah. All right, family, we're so thankful to be back once again in our daily prayer and devotion. This is a, a very, very important and glorious time for me as to be able to come before you and to share with you what the Most High has given unto me. You know, um, I, I'm so thankful unto him of how he allows us to, to understand and discern the time. He lets us know. He have, he have opened up our understanding to who we are, that we are the chosen people, and that there are people in our position, the reason why they have uh, resumed all of the goodness of the world, all the fruit of the land, all of the money have come their way. But all of that is temporary without the true blessings of the Most High, without the true way of righteousness on your life. All of that is going to come to an end. It's going to come to a close. That's why we need to be balanced. That's why we need to have our life laid out before him that he may allow true blessings to rest upon our life so that when we are exhumed, when we are put into the position, when we are elevated, then we'll be able to exemplify through our world eternity what it really means to live for the Most High and to be in the position, the prominent position that is reserved for us. All right, family, today we're talking about the way of life. See, see, this cannot just be something that you do occasionally. You know, sometimes people, they uh, g come into this way of life temporarily. And then they vacate this way. They vacate all of the dealings with the, with the Father because they're, they're too attached with this world. But this should be a way of life. This should be how you live your life. This should be the way that, that you perceive life. It should be through the eyes of the Father. Hallelujah. In the scripture, in the book of St. John, chapter number 14 and 6, it says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So he's letting them know that you can't even get to the Father unless you come through me. So many times people are trying to bypass him to get to the Father, but you cannot get to him without going through the door. Hallelujah. There is a way that seems right to the man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So we must understand that this way of life is there for us. He told us that he was the way, the truth, and the light. And you cannot come to the Father except you come to, through him, through his blood. He's the mediator between uh, uh, the Father and man. Hallelujah. If, if man wants to be able to find his way in life, he have to make the right choices. Hallelujah. The scripture tell you, uh, in the book of Joshua 24 and 15, he says, And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served on, which were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. So we must make our choice. We must choose this way of life. It should not be a strain to you to live for the Father. You know, many times people are at a, a strain 
they're straining to try to live this life. Many people think that it's hard. It's so hard to live this life. But when you die out to this life, when you surrender totally, it's not hard at all. You will be so glad and so elated that you have chosen to live this life. That's why the scripture says, if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord. Isn't that a strange way to put it? It seems evil to some someone to serve the Lord. If it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, how can that be? In other words, you have turned evil good and good evil. It's evil to do what's right. It's evil for you to honor the Most High, to lift up his name. Is that evil to you? If it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, then make your choice. I guess it does seem evil to some men because they're depri depriving their own self. Their flesh is being deprived. So, therefore, they think it's an evil thing to choose this way of life. So, he gives us an ultimatum. If it seems evil for you to, to receive all the blessings that I'm giving to you, if it seems evil to you that, that I'm offering you eternal life, if it seems evil to you that I want to reinstate you to your prominent position in the earth, then make your choice. Find out who you're going to serve. If you want to choose a temporary existence over an eternal blessing, an eternal blitz with the Father, then make your choice. He's not here to beg us. He's not here to plead with us. He's already done that when he went to the cross. So he's not doing it any, anymore. Then Joshua began to ask a question, whether the gods which were on the other side that your father served, which were on the other side of the flood, are you going to do what your parents done if they were not saved or your grandparents or your so-called ancestors? Are you going to repeat what they did and lose out on life? Are you going to do what your uh, past folks have done? You know, sometimes people try to justify the actions. Well, you don't know us. This, this is how we are. In our family, we just like this. We, we got quick tempers. You know, sometimes people want to justify their faults and try to say, well, that's how we are. Well, you don't have to be like like the fallen seed of your parents or those that have gone on before. But you can make a change. Hallelujah. Are you going to be like your fathers who served other gods on the other side of the flood? Or like the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell? Or the gods of this world that that are the gods of lust, the gods of, of riotous living, the gods of homosexuality and lesbianism, are you going to succumb to that? So it's evil for you to stop those things rather than to live for the Most High? Hallelujah. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve Yah. We will serve I'm a father. As for me and my house. You have to make a choice like that. Hallelujah. Because this is the way of life. Let us look a little bit more into the scriptures. We're looking at the book of John. Chapter number 14. A very, very uh, powerful scripture. That we need to look a little bit more in depth into. Christ comes out and he began to speak to his followers and his believers, he told them to let not your heart be troubled. In other words, if you believe in God, you're, you're really believing in me. That's what he was telling them. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I go and prepare a place for you. Now, notice he said, in my father's house. Now, in our mindset, we would think of just one particular place of dwelling. But when you look at the father, the scripture declared that the heavens if it is his throne and the earth is his footstool. Christ uh, pointed it out by calling it his house. But you cannot confine the Most High. He is going to bless his children or his followers that really follow him wholeheartedly with the entire earth. Earth. The Bible said, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. So the mansions that he's talking about is, is, is not just, you know, a little bitty house someplace. You're going to be able to be in the Father's house, which is the whole heaven is, is his throne and the earth is his footstool. So you're going to have access to what he have access to eventually. Then he goes on to say, I'm going to prepare a place for you. See, they was looking at Christ because they didn't want him to leave. They didn't want him to, to uh, depart. But he was giving them assurance. Someday, sometime, you're going to have to come to grips with a departure. That's part of life. Verse number three. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you shall be also. There you may be also. So in other words, he's opening up the way for them to let them know, don't be so uh, heartbroken because I'm going, because you coming too. I'm going to make a way for you to be there. This is your way. This is a way of life. This is why you're doing what you're doing and suffering how you're suffering, praying like you're praying, because you are charting your path in eternity. Verse number four, and whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. See, we are learning the ways of righteousness. This is the way of life. Let it be a way of life. Don't uh, cause it to be a struggle for you to live for him. It ought to be a way of life. You ought to live this life comfortably. And whenever you come to that crossroad, whereas the enemy will try to pull you off of your a devotion unto him, resort back to that this is a way of life for me. You don't want me to change my way of life. You don't want me to become something that I'm not. Hallelujah. So you have to make that determination that you're going to stay in this way of life. You're not going to deviate. You're not going to change. Even though you will have opportunities that constantly present themselves. Many times people have made bad decisions and have fallen from grace. But thanks be to the Most High that he extends grace and mercy unto you so that you can be reinstated. Yes, you can be reclaimed. You can be reinstated. Just don't uh, continue to abuse the grace of the Father. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to those that may have stopped by and and understood the problem that, you know, you may have done something wrong. You may have deviated. You may have have uh, made a drastic mistake. But he's not going to disqualify you as long as you have it in your heart, in your mind, in your will, that I'm going to retain and get back on path. I'm not going to stay away, but I'm going to get back on track. When you have that kind of determination, there is a way that he will introduce you to to get back to him. And this is the way through prayer and supplication. All right, verse number five. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither you go, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So this is the way. This is the ultimate way. He's talking to Jews or, or, or Hebrews. He's talking to Hebrew people. All of them there are Hebrew people that he's talking to. 
And he's letting them know that even you, you've got to come through me. You cannot get where you're trying to go except you come through me. If he told them that then, well, how about us today? How about us now? It goes for us too. You must come through the door. Hallelujah. Verse seven, 8, 7. If you have known me, you should have known my Father also, and henceforth ye know him and have seen him. So Christ is really breaking it down to him right now. But check this out. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. Show us the Father, and we'll be satisfied. You've been doing all this talking, but we ain't never seen this Father you're talking about. Hallelujah. Verse number 9 says, Jesus said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, yet hast thou not known me? Philip, he that hath seen me hath seen the Father, and how says thou then, show us the Father? So many times Christ would have to plainly speak to them that uh, when you have me, you have the completion of your salvation. Notice when he rose and, and went and sat on the right hand of the Father. And then he made the statement, all power in heaven and earth is given unto me. So if, if you try to get to the Father, he's going to point you right straight back to your Yahawashai. He's going to point you straight to him. So many people are trying to bypass him, but he's got all the power. He is the one. He is the mediator. The Father is the power, but Christ is the lever of the, or the button that is able to activate all the power in heaven and earth is in his hand. Our right, let's continue. Verse 10. Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me, and the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the work. So don't look at me as if I'm so much because everything that I'm doing is empowered by the ultimate power that's on the throne. All right, let's continue. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, and or else believe me for every the very works sake. So in other words, if you can't believe me because you're looking at me, look at the works I've done. Sometimes people, they can't receive you for who you are. Well, receive me for the life that I live. So that's why we have to let our life testify for us. Let our life be uh, portraying the way of life. Hallelujah. All right, verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. So in other words, he's handing the baton, or handing the mantle, over to us. So we have more power than what we think we have. We have more capability than we give ourselves credit for. Look at that verse one more time. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that means I'm telling you the truth here. He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. So in other words, you're not going to uh, be greater than him. I believe someone made the statement it's going to be greater in quantity because we are many that are, have received and are working in the vineyard. So this is the greater because we, we can never be equal with uh, the Son of Man. We cannot be equal with him, but as a whole, all of us working and doing and performing, that's what makes the works greater. All right, continue verse 13. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Hold it. And many people ponder over that. You know, the, that particular verse, you cannot use that 
as if you got a genie in a lamp that you can just rub the genie and make a statement and all of these things will happen. All of the blessings that come to you must be in the alignment with the will of the Father. You sit up and say, well, he told me anything I asked in his name, he's going to do it. I want, to, want him to give me a billion dollars. Well, the Father, he already knows your way. He knows the way that you take. He knows that some of us, if he gives some of us a billion dollars, we will never come back again. We would be lost within the brick and the mortar of those finances. And sometimes you'll come up short. Sometimes you end up broke. So he's not going to give you something that's going to be against his will. So this scripture that you look at is not to be utilized for selfishness. It's not to be utilized for you to just be able to get all that you want. Some people are too uh, stingy for the Lord to bless them like that. Some people hoard too much. Some people never hardly do anything for anybody. They got all kind of money just sitting over just to die and to leave it because they have deprived themselves so much that they can't even enjoy it themselves. So we cannot look at this scripture and think that it's a scripture where you could just pull anything, you know, just blab it and grab it. But it's have to be tempered with the will and the faith of the Most High. He don't want to do anything to jeopardize your salvation or your eternal life. All right, let's continue. If you love me, keep my commandments. You got to do his will. You got to be found obedient to his name. And I would pray the Father, he should give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. What is this other comforter? That's the power and the spirit of the Holy Ghost. That is what is missing in the lives of many people. They do not have it. They do not have it. If you don't have it, if you're in doubt, let me let me put it like this. If you don't know that you got the Holy Ghost, then you probably don't have it. It will make its arrival. It will, it will call it out. It will let you know that it has made its abode when it shows up in your life. Hallelujah. You cannot have this encounter without uh, some grandeur situation taking place. The Most High is not going to come into your life unannounced. And then you just said, because somebody else told me that he came in, into my life. No, when he come into your life, something is going to happen to let you know that he is there. You'll never be the same once you receive it. You'll be led and guided into all truth. He's going to come, he's going to speak, and let you know he's there. Hallelujah. Verse number 14. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. That being in you is the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. What the world is missing, the reason why they're having so much trouble, all right, let's continue. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me because I live, ye shall live also. At that day ye shall know that I am in the Father, and ye in, in me, and I in you. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. So when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, a lot of things that are that are, are pondering in your mind and in your spirit will be revealed to you. You will have that stamina. You will have that desire to stay with him no matter what when you receive that spirit of the Holy Ghost. You won't be able to deviate, go and come, go and come, leave back and forth, back and forth. When you allow him to totally give you the insight of what this is, you won't, you won't treat it as such. 
but you will be faithful. Hallelujah. And if you haven't been faithful up to this point, now is the time to make that choice to be faithful. If it seem evil unto you, serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve. All right, as we prepare to close, hallelujah. Verse number 22 says, Judah said unto him, Not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt uh, manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Hallelujah. It's not the, 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 the Iscariot. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and he will come unto him and make his abode with him. He that loveth me keepeth not my sayings, hallelujah, and the word which, I, which ye hear is not mine, but the Father which sent me. Hallelujah. So we have to do what the Most High is telling us to do. We have to obey this word if you want it to work for you. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I said unto you. That's why it's so important to receive the Holy Ghost. It opens up your understanding. It opens up your understanding to uh, the law. It opens up your understanding to grace. It opens up your understanding to the true love of Christ, of what he has for you. You cannot have the fulfillment in this life without the power of the Holy Ghost. Without the Ruah, you cannot experience him at the level that is designed for you to experience him. This is why the scripture says in verse number 26, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I live with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So when you see all these things going on in the world, when you see all these calamities happening, all of the trouble, all the violence, all of the wars, when you see all of these things happening, just know that you have the peace of the Most High in your life. And he is there to take you through whatever this world is offering, whatever this world is giving. He is there to bless you and to keep you and to magnify his name in you. So you cannot leave this. You cannot afford to miss this, sisters and brothers. This is a whole total, some total of what we're trying to be about. Hallelujah. We cannot afford to miss it. Hallelujah. Let me get ready to conclude. Hallelujah. He says, that my peace I give with you, I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. If you don't have any peace in your life, you're in trouble. Even in the midst of all these problems and troubles and terrible times ahead, you ought to have some peace. He said, the peace I'm giving you is not like the world give. I'm giving you a peace that's going to cause your heart to not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If you love me, ye would rejoice. I talked about rejoicing on yesterday. Because I said, I go unto the Father, for my Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before, it come to pass that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. So as these things are developing, as we see this world crumbling, as we see him tunneling and making a way, because before we can be set up, he's got to pull all this stuff down. So don't be afraid when they start coming up with all these ideas and trying to frighten you. The Father have already told you, don't be afraid. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, 
For the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. So in other words, it's going to get quiet for a minute. Notice how he said that. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you for the prince of this world cometh. So in other words, it's going to be a brief intermission. And the devil is going to begin to do a lot of things. But I have told you, don't allow your peace to be disturbed through that period of time. Hallelujah. Because that has to happen before he can usher in the totality of his greatness and all the supreme capability that lies within the life that you are living in the way of life. Hallelujah. Look at that verse one more time. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. He ain't got nothing to do with him. Hallelujah. But that the world might know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. So in other words, let us keep going, let us keep moving. Let us not lose heart. Let us not lose faith. But we must continue in his will and in his way. We must continue to walk in this way of life. Hallelujah. This is the way. We cannot afford to deviate from it. There's so much contained in this life. And if you deviate from it, you're going to miss it. All right, sisters and brothers. That's all we have for you today. We're talking about the way of life. He has charted it out for us. And those that adhere to it, those that receive it, those that walk into it, will be blessed tremendously. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you once again for everyone that's present. We pray that you cause us to walk in this way of life. Don't let us miss anything. Don't let us be afraid. Don't let us get off the foundation because we are frightened by all the things that this evil world is doing against your people will cause us to stand up and shine bright in the darkest of night. In the name of Yahweh, shine that the world knows Jesus, we say amen and amen. All right, family, that's it for today. We just continually... Most High keeps giving us something to give you. And we're so happy to be able to bring it to you. And we hope that you receive it in its precious name. All right, if you're new to this channel, we're going to ask you to please subscribe to this channel and hit that like button so that you can cause this message to go around to those that enjoy this type of word. Hit the notification bell that you might receive the lives and the uploads that we bring daily. Let us join ourselves together in prayer and supplication because this is the last day, this is the last hour, and we see so many things formulating. We see so many things happening, but you're already in the safety zone. All right, sisters and brothers, that's all we have for today. And we want to tell you to enjoy this day at the beginning of the Shabbat. Hallelujah. I usually rest like the scripture tell us to do on the, the Shabbat. Hallelujah. To regenerate my body as well as you on too because that's the day of rest. We thank you so much for joining in with us. We thank you for how that you are yet keeping your mind focused. And those of you that find it in your heart to sow into this ministry it would be much appreciated. In the name of the Most High. That's all we have for today. We're going to say peace and blessings. Shalom.